Today, we're going to take a look at the new, new, this is the Ollie Pack by Swift Industries. Find out what I think about it so far in this video. If you guys like videos like this, please consider supporting the channel by joining us on Patreon or stopping by the merch store and picking up some new patches and bandanas. This new, new bag right here is actually going to one of our Patreon supporters. So get in on the fun, support the channel, all the links below. And so this video is a little bit more of a first impressions. It's been really smoky here in Montana, so I haven't taken it bikepacking. I've used it for some day rides, just carrying layers, seeing how it handles, but this isn't like a full blown, you know, Two, two month review. The Ollie Pack is definitely for the minimalist bike packer at a fairly restrained six liter capacity. Just for frame of reference, the Swift Zeitgeist is 12 liters, so this is about half that capacity. This is both good and bad in my opinion, and we'll get into that a little bit later in the video. Looking a little bit closer at the bag, it attaches like most bike packing seat bags out there. There's a Velcro strap that attaches to your seat posts as well as some webbing straps that go up and over the rails, connecting to the bottom part of the bag and lifting the entire thing up. As you guys know, one of the big challenges of bikepacking seat bags is they tend to wag around. They have done a couple things to help mitigate that. There is stifting material all through the top here, even this lower portion and all the way down through here. This gives the bag some rigid support as well as preventing some bag sway. Other nice touches is that on the rear, there is a little bit of a reflective stripe as well as a tab to put a rear blinky. And on the side webbing, there are little hits of reflective material just to help you be a little bit more visible. One nice touch is the addition of this mesh pocket that runs all the way down here. This is a nice place to stuff things like wrappers, or if it's not too wet out, you could put additional layers down here. Probably one of my favorite features is if you've ever attached a bikepacking seat bag, then you know uh, one of the tricky things is getting the buckle over the saddle rail and attaching it to the rest of the bag. Some brands have solved that by making that piece of webbing longer. Swift employs a pretty interesting technique here. So this is the buckle and there is this stiffer piece of webbing, which is easier to thread over the saddle rail and then pull the buckle over. This is a really nice touch and it definitely makes the bag easier to get on and off even with a load. It still does take a little bit of finesse, but they've made that task a lot easier. Another thing I really like about the Ollie Pack is actually how it sits on the saddle. Its natural position is very vertical and upright, more so than a couple of other uh, bike packing seat bags I've used, which stick out horizontally. Those bags tend to suffer from massive sway, not to mention if you're a shorter rider, they become more difficult to use since there's a higher likelihood of the tire hitting the bag. This, however, since it has a more upward angle, makes it more short-legged person friendly and also a little bit more stable since you don't have all this weight cantilevered, you know, horizontally over the rear wheel. So attaching this bag is pretty straightforward. Loosely attach the Velcro and then using that uh, stiff webbing strap that kind of guides the buckle over the saddle and you can connect it to the other matching buckle. Let me do that on the other side and voila. So you can see even with stuff in the bag, that little stiff guiding piece of webbing strap makes it a lot easier to mount the bag on your bike. You can see the more vertical upward trajectory. Uh, usually this is the toughest problem with me with seat bags that go horizontally across is when you hit a bump, it's just gonna slap the rear tire, but that doesn't happen with this bag. Right now, this is a 700 by 50 millimeter tire uh, on the hard tack here. And with most bike packing bags I've tried, this would not be possible. It would just be slapping the tire every time I hit a bump. There are a lot of pros to this bag. I love how they make it easier to get the buckle attached even when loaded. I love the more vertical orientation because it doesn't have as much tire slap. The rigid parts to the bag do help the stability. What, what are the cons? For me, the big or rather small elephant in the room is the size. For, for this bag to work for you, you really have to be a minimalist bike packer or go on trips where you're not having to carry multiple bulky layers. But you guys know me, I like to fish and bring binos and go painting. So for my style of touring, uh, this would be a little bit too small. To give you a sense of what I've got in here now, windbreaker, waterproof gloves, beanie, a mid-weight puffy jacket, and a puffy vest. I could probably squeeze in a little bit more but that's getting pretty close to the max. When I go camping, I used an Enlightened equipment 
a quilt. And if I were to put that in the seat bag, it would take up at least, you know, maybe two thirds of the capacity if I squished it in really tight. So if you're going to use this for bike packing, uh, you gotta know who you are, you gotta pack really light, or just do trips when it's not cold out. One of the advantages of its small size is if you're not bike packing all the time, uh, you could use this as a means to carry winter layers. So if you're riding in the fall or fat biking and want to stow away those warmer layers, then this might be a good system. This is the Ollie Pack completely empty, nothing in here. And you can see it still maintains its form because of, all, because of all the rigid structures. A lot of really large bike packing bags just look like a hot mess when they're empty, but this actually works out okay. I think the very limited size also aids its inability to not sway. To, to some extent, as the bags get larger, unless it has some kind of rigid rail or rack system, it's just gonna sway, that's par for course. And speaking of bag sway, it does a pretty good job. I don't think it's completely immune to it. It is, however, still highly dependent on how well you pack the bag and how well you tighten it up. So there is a fair amount of technique still involved to get best results. If you're a sloppy packer and don't take the time to really dial in the strap, you're gonna get some bag sway, but for the most part, it does do a better job than larger bags that hang off the back. Another potential con is because of the construction, it's water resistant and not waterproof. For some that can be a deal breaker, uh, but to be honest, even when I do use waterproof bags, if there's something that I need to absolutely stay dry, I'll still put it in a trash bag. If you're using this on a really wet tour, I'd suggest you do the same. Uh, take whatever layers or gear that you want to stay absolutely bone dry and just double bag it. Okay, so who is this bag for? It is definitely for the minimalist bike packer and not the maximalist one. I would also say that it has some applications for longer day rides where you have to carry multiple layers, even some food. Let's say you're, you're riding with all your layers because it's cold and rainy. When it's empty, it still holds its shape really well. I can see for long winter or fall uh, rides, this could further extend that application. Olipack launches September 20th. If you sign up for the newsletter below, there is a discount. I believe it's like 15 or 20%, which is a pretty good deal for a bag like this. So if you want to get in on the new new at a lower price, uh, definitely sign up for the newsletter below. And like I said, this particular bag is going to one of our Patreon supporters. If you like the channel and want to partake in some of our giveaways, join us on Patreon, stop by the merch store, all that good stuff, and keep the supple side down.